Hi, how are you? Hi, Devin. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. This is a beautiful house that you have here. Thank you so much. It's a 1905 stone and shingle house. Beautiful. Um, actually, it was featured the previous owners when they did their renovation um, in this old house magazine about 22 years ago. 22 years ago. Yeah. That's incredible. And how long have you guys been here for? We've been here about eight years. Eight years. Mm -hmm. Have you made any big changes? We did the kitchen, but otherwise we've kept everything original to the home. Nice. And you wrote me about a crack in a built-in china cabinet? Yes. We have a beautiful built-in china cabinet in our dining room. It's mm -hmm. original to the house. Okay. As you can see, though, it has this large crack that oh. runs down the back of it. Yep. Um, it gets wider in the winter mm -hmm. and more narrower in the summer with the change of the seasons. We believe there's a hot water pipe that runs behind it. Really common to do that back in the days. They would use this built-in china cabinet as like a chase to run the plumbing up behind it. And in the wintertime, you know, things are going to contract. And imagine you have this heat source behind it, which is forcing it to open and close at different times throughout the day. It's really stressing that crack over time. So I think we have a really simple fix that we can do to this and we can keep the charm. You ready? All right, thanks. So rather than jeopardize the structural integrity of the cabinet by cutting the rear out, I'm actually gonna apply a half inch piece of MDF. We're gonna create a skin panel and we're gonna cap it right on top. Okay. MDF is great. It's really a bunch of glued up sawdust, mm -hmm. but it's really stable. It won't expand and contract like the wood behind it will. It takes paint well and it's used a lot in cabinetry. Great. But I notice you have adjustable shelving. Yes, it has been painted over, so we've never used that feature. Okay, well, we can definitely bring that back. Great. Do you like the height that's coming off the bottom and from the top down? I think so. Okay, so we'll use that as a starting point. We'll land here where we start. We'll stop there and we'll add holes in between so you can adjust it, say you had a large face or something like that. You can adjust the shelves mm -hmm. and uh, put it in. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Before we remove these shelves, let's make a note of the bottom shelf and the top shelf. So the bottom shelf will come up about 11 and a half inches. And the top shelf will come down two feet. And that's important for when we're outside and we're drilling our adjustable shelving pins, we know where to start and stop. Another thing I like to do when I'm working on any older projects that are gonna go back together, I have one, two, and three labeled on this painter's tape and we'll label those so they go back in the exact same spot. Great. Two for the middle, and three for up top. And then the last thing I want to do is set my scribes to a half inch, because I know I'm putting a half inch skin panel of MDF on here. I'll just make a half inch reference, and we can cut those later. All right, there's the first one. Okay. I'll begin by scoring the back and sides of the shelves, and then I'll use a soft mallet to tap them out. Now that we have the shelves removed and we cleaned up all that old caulking, we're ready to take some measurements for our rear panel. Mm -hmm. And to help do that, I have a block with a 45 degree angle cut on it. And what that does is it creates a long point for us to measure to. And as we hold it up here in the corner, we can see that 45 degree angle is perfect up there. But as I come down here, you can see that years of caulking and painting has really built up that corner. Yeah. So just for this rear one, I'm actually gonna put a 47 degree angle on the left and right, and that'll keep us from having to clean out all this old caulking and paint. Okay. Right. great. Thank you. So these are all dry fit. I wanted to do that because I wanted all the cuts and seams to be perfect. But now we need to take them down to add our adjustable shelving pin holes. So I'm going to remove these. I'll meet you out on the bench. Okay. All right. So we got our pieces on the table. First, the most important decision, brush nickel or solid brass? I think since we have brass fixtures in the room, we'll go with the brass. All right. Solid brass. I like it. And next we're ready to start laying out our holes. So we know that the bottom's over here. And how far was it we came up? 11 and a half. 11 and a half. And how far did we come down? Two feet. Two feet. Okay, now we know 
the ballpark that we can play in. And here's the jig that we're going to use. It's really easy to use. It takes all the guesswork out of it and it's really reliable. So the way you use this is you just butt it up against the edge. We'll find that 11 and a half inch mark, which will be our starting point. Now we can go every single hole if we wanted to. That's a step of inch and a quarter. Or we can go every other hole, go two and a half inches, a little bit less busy. What do you think? I think every other hole and a little less busy. Okay, sounds good. So we'll start on this point right here. And this comes with a self-centering drill bit. This is a quarter inch option. You can get it in five millimeter, but since we have quarter inch adjustable pins, we'll use this one. Really easy to use. All right, so now that we have our first hole drilled, we can move that down. We can set in our quarter inch pin, and that'll lock that out. And what we'll do is we'll just start coming down every other hole. So all we need to do now is repeat the process and we'll be ready to put the skin panels back up. Okay. Next, I'll place a bead of construction adhesive on the back of each panel before I put it in. Now we screw them into place. Next, I'll use my track saw to cut a half inch off of each shelf. This is to accommodate for the MDF panels. Now it's time to mount the shelves. All right, what do you think? I think it looks great. No more crack? No more crack. Awesome. Well, there's a little bit of homework, some painting, yeah. but I know a really good painter, the best in the business. I'll give him a call, maybe they'll come right over. Okay, great, thanks. You're welcome. Hi, Mauro. So good Hi, to see Dana. you. Nice to meet you. Wow, what a beautiful home. Thank you. And this is the type of house I would love to paint. Thank you so much. Well, let me show you the project Nathan and I were just working on. Oh, as a matter of fact, he gave me a call. He gave me some information about this. He said you had like a big crack in it? Yes, our china cabinet had a large crack running down the back, so we patched it with some MDF panels. Perfect. You guys did a great job but it's not done yet. We need to paint it and make it beautiful. And yes. the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove all the shelves. Great. All right, let's remove the first one. There we go. And the good thing that Nathan did it for us, he kept the numbers underneath so we know exactly when they go back. Just like that. Okay. That's a shelf number three. Great. All right, let's take the beans out. Just gonna lay it down flat on the floor, just like that. Make sure that's nice and tight. Use the green tape and tape the perimeter. MDF is a very porous and absorbent material. I'm going to use an oil-based primer to allow the paint a good adhesion and a better coverage. I also noticed a couple cracks on this trim. I can easily get rid of it with a little bit of caulking and some painting touch-up. I'm going to fill those holes with a wood filler.
And then we're going to sand with the 220 grit sandpaper. After the sand is done, we're going to suck up the dust with a HEPA vac. We're going to fill all the cracks and openings with the flexible caulking. I touch up over the uh, the wood filler mm -hmm. with primer, and now we're ready to paint. Okay. All right. Usually in a situation like this, I would uh, have to match this color mm -hmm. and the finish, but it looks like you have some done painting before. Yes. Right. And you need to know the color, right? Yes. We wrote down all the names, and it's simply white. Oh, perfect. And we're gonna do exactly like we did with the primer. Mm -hmm. We're gonna cut in with the two-inch angle brush, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna roll the field. Let's wait for this paint to dry. We'll be back and put the second and final coat on. While the paint is dry, let's put the shelves back and I can touch up if there's any scratch with the paint. Devin, what do you think? It's an amazing improvement. It looks great. Looks perfect. I love it. The mm -hmm. colors, everything that you have in that is perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for your help and be no sure problem. to say thank you to Nathan as well. I'll do it, but I'll give him some hard time first. Okay. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Mara and Ricky for Ask This Old House. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.